Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Phantom 3 standard. Yes, I got one of these in. I know a lot of you guys have been saying, hey, go get the Phantom 3. So, hey, I listened to you and I did. So, I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit about my uh, deciding factors in purchasing the Phantom 3 standard. Um, and also, some of the things I think uh, you guys need to know if you're interested in buying one. Because one of the pieces out there, I was really unclear about what this does and doesn't do and how this works versus, say, the up air and all that. Now, one of the things I am going to do is I am going to do a comparison between this and the up air. Uh, because I don't think a fair comparison really has been done between these two. Because one of the things I'm going to share right up front is this and the up air are really two different devices. Yes, both have four propellers and both fly but I think the intent is a little bit is actually quite a bit different between the two of these now in this episode more than an unboxing I'm going to be talking about some of the specifications and showing you guys out there if you're interested in getting one of these what this is all about because again I think there's a bunch of uh, videos out there that show you the bits and pieces uh, but I'm gonna get down a little bit more in the nitty-gritty in this video so this is what this is going to be about so my sort of deciding factors in purchasing this and also some various things that I want to share with you guys that I didn't easily discover about this until later so let's go ahead let's first open the box because one of the things I want to do is kind of walk through the various pieces um, and share with you the different aspects and we'll both see what's sort of in here together I can sort of guess so uh, the box itself though before I get into this is again rather small so we're at about uh, around 15 and a quarter inches or so or uh, about 39 centimeters by roughly I don't know if this is getting in there by about 14 inches or about 35 and a half centimeters and tall it is about eight and a half inches or about 21 centimeters tall the box is a little bit smaller than I expected but seems to be sort of the thing with uh, these drones because the up here box is a little bit smaller than I had expected too so when we open this up I'm gonna have to kind of slide this around and see if I can deal with a little bit of this uh, we come with some books and some warnings uh, read okay yeah we'll do all that right um, some information there so we take this cover off and uh, here we have the quad so all packaged very nicely uh, apparently some instructions there interestingly enough the battery comes inserted rather than separate I like this the gimbal is kind of twisted but it does have um, some sort of gimbal locking mount if you can see that here on the camera the camera also has a lens uh, cover and uh, seems to be quite the quality configuration on the whole gimbal piece here so kind of impressed by that I'm gonna set this off to the side a minute and I'm gonna pull the controller out so the controller is the atypical DJI controller again very nicely packaged um, I want to talk about a few of the things here and again I'm really not really focusing on this as being an unboxing um, but I do want to share a couple different pieces and just see how this comes out of the box I've ordered another replacement uh, one of these because everybody says so this looks like all the chargers and stuff so that's basic stuff so I'm going to put this box on the floor and then we're going to talk about some of these pieces okay so one of the first things that I want to kind of call out here is um, on these the Phantom 3 standard this actually has a three axis gimbal so there's a motor here so if we kind of orientate this so it rotates in this so it'll smooth out uh, yaw configuration changes you know so if you yaw the copter you'll have smoother dynamic change there you'll have dynamic change in the pitch uh, well, actually, I think the pitch is this way and then roll this way. So it's got a full three um, three axis brushless motor gimbal. Now, as opposed to the up air, where you notice there's no motor in this section, so it, its yaw effect is going to be stark, and you'll notice that in some of my other videos. Now, in fairness, obviously, this is $100 less in cost. Uh, than the fan. I'm actually a little bit uh, more than $100 less. This was $419. And I paid uh, $2.99 for the up air. So a little bit of price difference, but this is nice. And the one thing is, if you look at the quality 
of the Up Airs gimbal versus the quality of the DJI gimbal. Far, far different. This is um, uh, mainly made out of a higher grade metal, it appears. Stainless steel caps. Uh, there is a little bit of exposed wiring here on the, on the gimbal. But in short, the gimbal is a far better gimbal. Now, one of the things I will do is I will put the straps through here because it has the very same uh, gimbal pins here that I had problems with on the um, up air. <laughs> Excuse me, getting a little over a little bit of a cold. So that is a difference. Uh, but I'll do that change. Now the other piece is it does come with a SD card. So there is an 8 gig SD card that does come with it. Uh, so that's rather nice. Uh, it also does have a port to connect. It does have a micro USB port in the front of it. So this is a nice feature that you can connect to that's um, uh, not pretty clear on a lot of the documentation. So you can do firmware upgrades. You can also do firmware upgrades on the app. Now that's one of the big things that I do want to point out is the difference between the DJI, DJI, I'll spit that out, keep wanting to call it a G, and many of the other ones is the fact that this is an app-driven device. And, and what do I mean by that? Is uh, if I look around here and behind me, uh, in short, you can take a tablet, and I've got the uh, DJI Go app loaded, and then what happens is you pick the uh, different and then how to connect. And then what happens is this connects via a Wi-Fi or cable connection to this device, your transmitter, and this, the logic or the compute power in this actually controls flying this. So you can do waypoint flying, you can do orbits, and all the math for all that flight control is done from this tablet. Now, there are good and bad things because you can do some amazing things with this application. And I'm not going to show uh, all that in this video because, again, I just want to discuss some of the aspects. However, with this, you can run the DJI Go app, you can run Leechy, or you can run Autopilot. So there are different options for different applications to control this copter. So it can also run in an autonomous fashion too. So this gives it an advantage over other things. Now there is a little bit of a downfall because especially the Go app, uh, the DJI Go app, also looks for different things like your location and it's a little bit of a big brother control I must admit so be aware of that you're not autonomously controlling this when you're running this app because it is connecting back to DJI and sending it information and doing different things exactly what I'm not sure of but I've also seen a lot on the internet that if it if it's with with uh, um, geolocation turned on what happens is it can lock you out of areas and then you got to have an unlock token and things like that with something like the up air you just fly it whatever you want wherever you want whatever you do it and it's basically just a direct stick control so there are pluses and minuses with this now the other piece i want to talk about is the controller so you see that there's one antenna on the controller there's actually two more antennas in here for the video now as i understand it this is a 5.8 gig control uh, antenna. So the telemetry and control signals from the controller are sent to the copter via this antenna. There are two antennas inside here. Basically, I believe they're a diversity antenna. They're 2.4 gig antennas which connect to the video of this for FPV. Now, one thing, one of the things to be aware of, 2.4 gig is probably a pretty um, slow link for FPV. And the second piece is this isn't feeding direct video out. This is then feeding to an application which has to process the video out in the application or render it. So this is all going to cause some version of lag. And so you're not going to be able to use a typical 5.8 gig receiver, diversity receiver and things like that like you've seen me do with the up air. It won't work with this. So there are some pluses and minuses if that's what you want to do. Now you can do screen recording off the application on here and other things so you can kind of trade off between the two but it is a little bit different of a beast. Um, the other thing is I want to talk about the 2.4 gig and the 5.8 gig. Basically these are Wi-Fi frequencies. These are open frequencies by the FCC here in the United States and, and most of the world in general. I believe it's a little bit different in Japan but we're just going to talk in, in general. So it, they are a little bit crowded bands. Now I do like the fact that this does use 5.8 for communication because one of the things you're going to do is probably pick up a little bit of clear sight distance with the 5.8 but you are going to lose 
lose some distance probably with the um, 2.4. Now this has been one of the big problems with the standard is the lower range. Now this is rated anywhere from a CE rating of 500 meters to an FCC rating of 1000 meters. So you're talking about roughly 1500 feet to somewhere in 3000 feet. Uh, from everything I've seen in the videos, you're probably going to be closer to the 1500 feet at best. Now, one of the reasons I did buy this is there are plenty, and I will do a separate review as well as an installation video, with modifications to simply open this up and replace this antenna with some high directional pan, high gain directional panel antennas. So this is going to be, this is one of the things that really swayed me into buying this copter, is the fact I could make those modifications and get that range and video. Because again, one of the big things that I want to do with this is capture video out of it. Now, everything else is pretty much standard. And again, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a sort of a side-by-side -side review, in, you know, in, probably in a week or so, between this and the up air. But I wanted to kind of share some of the dynamics. Um, because it's about uh, 350 millimeters, uh, you know, from prop center to prop center across uh, and it's a rather compact unit now I understand according to the specs it says around 20-25 minutes of flight time uh, the battery appears to be a little bit smaller than the up air's battery and again I'll do a little bit of comparison I forget what this is I was trying to look at um, this and see if I can see this is uh, uh, 48 basically 4,480 milliamp per hour battery. So this is smaller than the up air's battery. Now I believe, again, it's a smart battery too, so um, it has all that set up. And I believe, according to the DJI site, if I remember correctly, it has, as looking at it here online, it has a 25-minute uh, flight time. Let me see if I can find that real quick. And pull that up so uh, so battery yes yeah, so it's 48 15.4 uh, 15.2 volt um, 365 grams now one of the other things I've, I've forgotten to mention is this seems to have or, or have a better understanding of its temperature operating range and uh, it does have a cold weather warm-up and I forget where it's got in here um, the temperature operating range is, but it did have something in here. Uh, right here, operating temperature range 32 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, you might remember I've flown the um, up air one with no problems. Uh, in lower temperatures down to closer to zero degrees Fahrenheit with no issues. I have seen some folks in cold weather have issues with these because it does some sort of internal warm up if it's too cold. So again, I don't know how this is going to perform in colder weather operations. So something that you might be want to be aware of. Uh, the other thing too is the camera is pretty impressive on this because this does have basically a, a one half uh, inch CMOS uh, sensor. Now I don't see the effective uh, effective pixel sizes on here, how big the um, the wells are for the pixels for electron collection, but it does have a field of view of 94 degrees with a 20 millimeter lens or an equivalent uh, 35 millimeter uh, equivalent format of f2.8. So this has got a pretty good size lens opening, so I expect the camera performance to on here to be um, pretty good for what it is. Now this is the 2.7K version, uh, so which for me is more than plenty for most of what I'm doing on um, YouTube and that kind of stuff. So again, I wanted to share those aspects uh, with everyone. It's good. Now it does have a single GPS unit. It doesn't have the also the Russian GPS version, Glasnost or what have you. Uh, you know, so its precision is probably going to be within about a meter to four feet or so uh, of range, which is pretty good. Um, you know, the overall size and everything uh, looks pretty good. I also like the fact, you can see in the side of the gimbal, it does have an exposed USB port, so hopefully we can, you know, keep the gimbal updated also. You know, that was one of the pieces that we talked about in a previous Up Air video, where they have hidden the USB port, but you can access it, but it's sort of a pain in the butt. Why don't you just, you know, put an opening and allow you to upgrade it. So I like the openness of this platform. 
However, though, I do want to be clear that, you know, I do consider this and the up air to be really two different um, applications of similar technology, sort of like a ball peen hammer versus a claw hammer. So, and again, we'll sort of do a one-up comparison. Now, the up air does have a new version out, which does, is, is app driven. And I have to be honest with you guys, I took a look at the app and it's pretty crude um, in, uh, of an app. And that's one of the reasons I was going to buy the up air with the app, uh, but I didn't. I decided to wait. I expect that Leech Your Autopilot will also pick it up because, again, what's happening is this copter is sending to this transmitter its GPS locations. The app is processing all that versus its internal maps and things like that that it's downloaded, sending it back to the copter or downloading it to the copter, depending upon the application and... Um, how you mode of operation and i'm sure that that eventually you know uh lychee and and autopilot will include it i have written to uh lychee and asked asked the lychee are you going to include the up air and the response back i got was what is the up air but i'm sure once they figured out and understand the market that this, it could open up for them it'll probably be added and if that happens i think that would be a really good thing uh, because I'm really impressed with the up air's frame and everything. But right now the new up air is at 329 with the app and that puts it less than $100 difference than the standard. And at that I would probably have to recommend going with this over the up air with the app. Um, because again, now you have the screen and everything you have to add back into the equation of the up air versus the phantom. So uh, kind of here there. And again, I'll do a little bit greater detail, but I wanted to, to review those pieces of how all this works because I don't think something really good has been done uh, with this. Is This is really an app-driven device. So um, it's not so much, while you can fly it by stick, I would, I, so far I would not recommend this as an overall FPV. I think the Up Air 1, probably for straight FPV flying, is probably better because of the 5.8 video link. Um, and the fact that that video link is not processed by an application, so it doesn't have the 2.4 uh, lag in it as well as being processed by the app or what have you. Uh, however, on the other hand, if you want to do waypoint flying and orbits and follow me and all this stuff with the addition of Leechy or autopilot, this can be an amazing helicopter and is well worth the extra hundred and some dollars difference. Uh, and you add that. So uh, with this and the uh, Argitech uh, range extender puts me at about 500 bucks for this. And then the app is about 20, 30 bucks for the various platforms. So for around 550 bucks, you basically get the power of an advanced um, out of this device. So uh, anyways, hopefully this helped to explain a little bit of my thinking, a little bit about what this does, how this works a little bit better. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the bottom uh, comments below and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, also, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, it helps me out, produce more of these videos. Subscribe button coming up over there. And hey, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.